Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. Certainly it is a blessing once more and again for us to have this opportunity that we can come together and worship and praise God's holy and his divine name. I believe it's still said in John chapter 4 and verse number 24, God is a what? Spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And to worship God in spirit means to worship God with the right mindset. To worship God in truth means to worship God according to what is written down in his holy and his divine word. And we can only ask that God be pleased in the things that we do down here. So one day he'll reward us up there. Amen. 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 We're, we're not going to uh, tarry long here um, on this afternoon. It's 641 by my timepiece. I plan on being done by 7 o'clock. Is that all right with you? Is that all right with you? All right. All right. That's all right. All right. We're going to see what we're going to do. This today I want you to go with 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. There was an atheist that was having a conversation with his Christian friend. And he said, you know what, y'all Christians, man, y'all got all kind of holidays. Y'all celebrate Easter. Y'all celebrate Christmas. He said, then you look at the Jews. They celebrate Passover and they celebrate Yom Kippur. But we atheists, we don't have anything, man. It's almost kind of like discrimination. We ain't got no holidays. His Christian friend said, won't you celebrate April 1st? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2, <laughs> verse 11 and 12. <laughs> you get it on the way home. When you get, when you get down to the red light, you're like, oh, I got it now. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. The Bible says, for what man knoweth the things of a man... Save the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You know in this life a lot of us learn about people. But too few of us learn of people. And to use the preposition of means that you learn the spirit that motivates the person to do what it is that they're doing. So I want to give for a thought on tonight. Do you know of him? A lot of us know about God and about Jesus. But do you know of him on tonight? All right. The Apostle Paul here is writing to the church at Corinth to correct some serious problems that existed in the church there at Corinth. Now, the church was full of envy. It was full of strife. There were divisions. There was immorality. There was false teaching. And there was inconsistency. Um, some were saying that I follow Paul. Then you had some saying I follow Apollos. Then you had some saying I follow Cephas. And all they were going on saying that others that said that they were following Christ. There were groups that were gathered together. They had big eyes. They had little U's. They were going to court against each other. And things had gotten so bad down there that one man was even having relations with his daddy's wife. They needed to have their own TV show down here at Corinth. I mean, they needed to have their own website down there in Corinth. Man, Corinth had it going on down there in Corinth. And in other words, that church had a mess going on. They were depending upon attendance rather than atonement. They were depending on faithfulness rather than forgiveness. They were depending upon denomination rather than regeneration by the washing of the word of God. They were depending upon membership rather than discipleship. And, but in spite of their envy, their strife, their divisions, their immorality, their false teaching, and their inconsistencies, they prided themselves upon, here it is, being super spiritual. I know God. I'm God's child. I don't sin. I don't do wrong. The people think that, 
But when the man of God, Paul, writes to them, he sees something totally different. He says, okay, I know you think you're doing pretty good. I know you think you got it all going on. But let me tell you, I see envy. I see strife. I see, I see all of this stuff going on. And if y'all really want to be the church that Christ has established, you can't have any of that stuff going on on the inside. Because everything that's going on on the inside is to mirror and represent Christ. And that is not any type of representation of what Christ would have. Now watch this. Some of them were putting on a show. Acting like they were holy when they knew they were not holy. They tried to mimic lifting up holy hands, acting like doing what the other people did. They were trying to fake speaking in tongues. I mean, they were doing everything that they could to try to seem like they were spiritual people. They tried to act pure. They tried to act holy. They tried to act undefiled. But anybody that's ever acted know that you can only act for so long before the real comes out and you see what you are really made of. And do you know it takes too much energy to act? It, it takes too much energy to try to put on and to try to put on a facade and to be something that you are not. Why not just be who God has called you to be and live the life that God has called for you to live so that you can be successful as a child of God? They pretended that they were sanctified and had the spirit of God. And even though the members of the Corinthian church were gifted, they were carnal. Even though they were gifted, they were immature. Even though they were gifted, they were unspiritual. So can you see that a person can have a gift from God and still not be living for God? A person can have a gift from God, but they may not be using the gift that God gave them for the purpose that they should be using it for. A lot of people, when God gives them gifts, they use those gifts for their own gain. Their material game. What, what, how can I use this to benefit myself? How can I use this to get something for myself? And it's not too often that you hear somebody say, hey, how can I use this to better glorify the kingdom of God? How can I use this to build up the house of God? But God gave you the gift so that you could in turn use it for his glory. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians that he gave some uh, prophets, that he gave some apostles, that he gave some teachers, some evangelists for the perfecting of the faith in the ministry everything all of those gifts that they were given it wasn't for them to go out and get a television show and at 12 1 o'clock in the morning send me 15.99 and i'll send you some miracle spring water i'll send you a blessed cough out it wasn't for them to try to get any type of gain for themselves but god blessed them so that they could do his will and so that they could do his work some people today are acting just like those folk down there in the Corinthian church. They want rather to appear to be something rather than to really be something. They would rather appear to be spiritual because, man, it's too much work to be spiritual. It's too much work to be a child of God. Y'all got too many rules and too many regulations. It's too much work to try and do all of that. So they would much rather just appear to be what they are not. But I never understood trying to appear to be something to people so that they will accept and admonish you when the man upstairs really knows what's going on. And that is the one that his judgment and his perception of you really count. It matters not a hill of beans what anybody else have to say, but you have to really be living your life every day, not just Sunday and not just Wednesday, but you have to live your life every day in such a way that God can look and say, hey, I know you're trying. Hey, I, I, I see you're putting in the effort. I see you're putting in the work and God can work with somebody like that. It's ironic that even today, there are people that act real spiritual. But when they're really put to the test, they find out that they are still babes in Christ. So the question has to be asked of every person, where am I? Okay? I was here when I came into the body. And years have went by. I was here. Now I'm right here. So you, you see, you seeing that? You see, okay, I was right here, 
Now I'm right here. I, 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 I'm, and you know, anybody that's looking at me will not be able to tell that I've really moved because you, you, know, you really have to put a mark or something right here to say, oh, you moved from it. But people looking on the outside, they can see that you know, there hasn't really been any type of change in your life. So you have to ask yourself the question, okay, what have you not been doing? Where, where am I slacking? Where am I missing the mark? Because if you are a child of God, God desires for you to be farther along this week than you were last week. God desires for you to be further along this month than you were last month. Every day of your life, that is why it's important. And we stress studying God's word, not just in a corporate setting like we are right now, but in your personal time, spending time with God. So in turn, you are strengthening yourselves, getting ready for the battles, the tosses and the turns that this life is going to bring. OK, now some of some people, they're still trying to to act spiritual, but but they are actually walking according to their flesh. Now, our, our relationship with Christ is a spiritual relationship and a new nature re we receive from the spirit of God. And that's why the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You understand man is a triune being. We're triune beings. That means that we have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. The natural man, which is the flesh, is under the dominion of the soul. I call that the animal life. And, and, and the spirit must be born again before we can comprehend the things that are spiritual. Now, those under the animal life, as I said, think that it's foolish to get up on a Sunday morning and go out and sit somewhere with folk and just sing and listen to somebody and give money. So they think that's craziness. They think that's foolish. Man, I got better things that I can be doing on a Sunday morning. I got better ways than I can be spending my time. The things of the spirit is foolish to the person that does not understand Christ in his will but 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 the, those under that kind of life they think it's foolish that we do those things but the word spiritual means pertaining to the spirit in order for a person to be spiritual they must be indwelt they must be filled taught and led by the Spirit of God. Because if God ain't leading you, ain't but one other person that can be leading you. <laughs> and, and, and that's why we want to be led by Christ. We don't want the devil to lead us nowhere. They used to sing a song said, don't let the devil ride. Don't let the devil ride because if you let him ride, he going to want to drive. You, you, you can't give the devil room because if you give that joker an inch before you know it, you done went mild. Paul says something that's important for us to get in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 25. He said that if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. You're living in the spirit, therefore you ought to also be walking in the spirit. Now, the word walk in the Greek means to march with. Or, or, or to keep step with. You know, I'm not just walking. I'm not just walking by myself, but I'm walking in unison with God. I'm walking with God and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. That, that, was, a, that was a little girl one day, uh, her and her family, they had went to church. And after they had gotten back from church, the little girl kept asking, uh, where's Andy? Where's Andy? Has anybody seen Andy? And her dad was like, it better not be no Andy in my house. I don't know no Andy. And, and then she went to her mom and said, hey, have you seen Andy? Have you heard from Andy? She said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Then she went to her brother. She said, hey, have y'all seen Andy? Does anybody know where Andy is? They said, we don't know who Andy is. So everybody come in and say, hey, who is this Andy person that you're talking about? She was like, well, y'all didn't hear him talking about him at church. Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. Andy tells me that I am his own. Point, I want to give you two points real quick today. And point number one is, true spirituality means living for Christ. True spirituality means living for Christ. Notice I didn't say living for people. I said living for Christ. For Paul, Christ was his reason for living. The man or woman who lives for Christ 
has everything to live for. Life is worth living when you live for Jesus. But you see, when you try to live for this person and that person and this person, and you realize you can't satisfy this person, you can't satisfy that one, you can't do good enough for this one, you can't do, do, do a good enough for that one, just realize, hey, I'm good enough for Jesus. Why not I just try to satisfy him? So some folk may be living. You got you to realize, okay, if I'm not living for Christ, what am I living for? If I'm not working for Christ, then what am I working for? Some people are living for money and possessions. But when death comes, they got to leave it behind. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the entire, the whole world and lose his soul? Some people may be living for comfort. But when disease comes and, strat and, and tragedy uh, strikes in your life or death knocks on your door, what will comfort profit you? Some people are living for position. They want to be in control of something. But what happens when you get pushed out or edged out or fired? What happens to you then? You no longer have that position. So what are you living for? Some people are living for family. Some people live for their wife and their kids. But what if your family is suddenly taken away from you? What good will that do at the judgment seat of Christ? You may be living for recognition. You may be living for honor. You may be living for popularity. You may be living for recreation, but it won't last. The songwriter said, you may build great cathedrals, large and small. You may build skyscrapes, grand and tall. You may conquer all the failures of the past, but only what you do for Christ is going to last. You can build what you want, do what you want, achieve what you want, but only what you do for Christ is going to last until that day that he calls you home. And number two, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 16 tells us this. All, not some, but all scripture is given by God. It's given of God. The word inspiration in the Greek means to breathe. It simply means that God breathed the word. He breathed it into the mind of those that wrote Paul, John, Matthew, and all these others that wrote it. They weren't just writing stuff that was, come, that was just coming up with. They wrote those things that God breathed into them. And we realize that God only breathed on certain men. God didn't breathe on everybody. And that's why after John closed up the book of Revelation, you still had men coming by. You got, you got the book of Philip. You got the book of Enoch. You got the book of this. You got the book of Esther. You got this and that. All of these people coming along. Do you even know that there was a man um, centuries after John had died that came along and tried to write another book? And he really just, really just copied a lot of the language and stuff that John wrote. But John was long dead, so how could he have wrote it? So they were trying to pass all these writings that they had as being inspired. And that's why you have people today that claim, oh, you can't trust that Bible. It's missing books. Oh, you can't trust that. Oh, you know, you got missing books. All the stuff ain't in there. We serve a God, and I believe this to the day that I die, that he would not leave us down here helpless. He would not leave us down here without giving us direction. He would not leave us down here without giving us a clear path and a clear plan on what it is that we need to do in order for our souls to be saved. God wouldn't do us like that. Even the Bible says that many other signs did he in the midst of his disciples, but these are written that you might believe. Meaning you don't need to know everything that he did, how he did it. He might have fed 20,000 with one fish and one loaf. Guess what? You don't need to know about it. But those things that are written are written that you might believe. This word, this word, the scripture is the very breath of God is given for doctrine is given for reproof is given for correction and instruction in righteousness it is not the ideas of man but it is the very heart and mind of God it is God's message to mankind the more we study it the more we learn it the more we obey it the more we practice it, guess what? The more spiritual you will become. 
But do you know what happens when you as a person, just say if you go a few weeks without eating, Come on now. it's going to be a problem. You'll go to the doctor and they'll probably diagnose you with something called malnutrition. Do you know what happens when a child of God goes days, goes weeks without feasting on the word of God? You become what we call spiritually malnourished. And, and, and that's why that's why the Bible says that we ought to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divided in the word of truth. In order to be able to, you can't rightly divide what you don't study. <laughs> you 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 cannot rightly divide what you have not spent time with. So the Bible is a book of truth. It doesn't just contain truth, but the Bible is truth. The writer of Psalms says it like this. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Listen, without the word of God, you and I would be walking around in darkness. Yeah. It is through the word of God that you and I have been born again. For the Bible says that whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? The word of God gives you the ability to grow spiritually. The reason you have, we have so many spiritual midgets, I'll say, in God's work today is because we don't study the word of God. So that we might apply it to our lives and grow. So many people, they use God's words like a medicine cabinet. You only go to it when you need it. You know, you, you don't go until your stomach start acting up. Where that pepto bismol I had up in here? You, you know, you, you start having a headache. I knew I had some Aleve, some Tylenol, or some up in here somewhere. You don't go until you have a need for it. Well, can I tell you something? Whether you know it or not. You have a need every day of your life for God and for God's word. That's why it's important that you spend time, not just some days, but every day. Can I tell you something? And, and, and I've learned this to be true. Sometimes I go back elder this in two or three days in a row, staying the same thing. Every time I go back, man, I ain't see that the last time. Man, that, I, man he, you must, did he just put that down because, you know, I didn't see that the last time. I didn't get that understanding the last time. Can I tell you, God's word? when you come to it it is fresh it is new it's just like a breath of fresh air every time you come to it and anybody that's ever went to the world looking for something you found it you found it you found it if you're sick and you need wisdom you know you can go to the book of proverbs and it got stuff in there written everything that you need you can go to the book of psalm david just writes about just about everything that you need you got a psalm for it whatever you need god and, and I just went back, as I said a while ago, God would not leave us down here helpless. He would not leave us here without giving us a clear path and a clear plan. And, 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 and true spirituality is working in the service of God, is laboring in the kingdom of God. If when you give the best of your service, telling the world the Savior has come, be not dismayed when men don't believe you. The people will understand and say, well done. In Exodus chapter 35, when they were outfit in the tabernacle, the scripture says in verse number 21, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whom his spirit made willing, we have more than enough people for the service of the Lord. God is looking for somebody that's not going to have to be made to go, but that's willing to go. Isaiah said, here am I, send me. You, you ain't got to make me go, God, you've been too good to me. For you to have to sit around and beg and probe me to do something. You know what, Lord, I, I'm ready. Here am I, send me. We ought to say like Isaiah said, truth and life. Here am I, send me. I may be old but send me. I'm young, but send me. I may be blind, but send me. I, 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 I may be have, be, have all these issues going on, but Lord, if you can use me, use me. 
A child of God ought to want to serve the Lord. Amen. We should be willing not to just go part of the way, but all the way. We talk about what we'll do, what we ought to do. But you see oftentimes that nobody ever gets around to doing it. Our Lord doesn't want lip service. He wants heart service. He don't want lips, he don't want head service, he wants heart service. What we do in the body, we ought to do because we love the Lord. You ain't doing it for no person, you're doing it because you love the Lord. We should surrender our time, our talent, our offering, and talk to the Lord. The child of God, you are to submit yourself totally to the Lord. To be holy and acceptable in his sight. Now, getting to know the Lord and establishing a relationship with him is a lifelong process. You don't just learn all about God in one day. It's a lifelong process. Can I tell you, people that have been in the church 60 years, still growing. Still growing. Still growing. So that lets me know, as a child of God, I will never get to a place in my life. Well, I've learned enough. I never get to a place in my life where I've studied enough. I never get to a place in my life where I say, I've heard enough about that. I don't need to hear anything else about it. Because anybody that's ever learned anything, you know that every now and then you have to revisit what you've already learned. Because if you don't revisit it, you'll find out what you learned after a while you beat and got away from it. And that's why it's important every now and then for the body of Christ that we got to go back to the old landmark. We got to go back to those fundamental principles of what it is that first brought you to the Lord. What it is that you first heard that brought you into the body of Christ. We got to revisit that stuff because life beats up on you even of itself. The things that you go through beat up on you and you can get a little weary in your mind and forget from time to time. That's why that even even after you've been taught and converted, you need to be taught again. You need to continuously be taught so that you can stay on the straight and narrow with God. To really know the Lord, you got to know what he is all about. Paul says it like this, let this man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Not only did he talk the talk, but he walked the walk. His mission was to redeem a sin-sick world. His motives were to bring glory and honor to his father. His ministry was to liberate and set free those that were captive. His message was repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And I'm glad on this afternoon that I know him for myself. Any of y'all glad you don't just know about him? But at this point in your life, you've learned of God. You've learned of him. And you're asking every day of your life, Lord, just let me have a closer walk with you. Lord, I, I, Lord, I, 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 heard, I heard somebody say it like this, Lord, I want to be so full of Jesus that if a mosquito bite me, it'll fly away saying there's power in the blood. <laughs> we are representatives. We're, we're, we're representatives. We're represent. If, if you ever remember how, I don't know if they still do it like that Avon and stuff like that. They used to have people, they just sent them out to your house. They'd be trying to sell stuff. You know what? We kind of like that. You know, something like that. We don't have an earthly headquarters or a home office, but our home office is in heaven. But the master told us before he left, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. God, we are his foot soldiers. We are to be his foot soldiers. And if you're going to be for Christ, you got to be of Christ. And to be of Christ means to live a life that is like Christ. So you mean to tell me, preacher, I can live like Jesus? You can try Preacher, you mean to tell me that I can do it? No, no, I'm not saying that. But what I'm going to tell you is this. God will give you the strength to live the life. Those areas that you are weak, he'll give you strength. But you have to be a person that can 
is willing to come to God and say, now, Lord, I need you to help me. I, Lord, Lord, I need you to help me get this right. Because sometimes if we're not careful, we can become just like those people down there in the Corinthian church. I got it all together. I'm doing good, man. I'm all right, man. I am super spiritual. If you look in the Bible, my picture is in there like, man, I like, I, I, I know it all. I, 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 I'm good. I, I, I know the books of the Bible. I, I, I know who wrote this and, and I know who wrote that. What about your life? What, what about it? Folk could care less what you profess. What's your life like? And if we're going to be people living for Christ, we're going to have to be the people of Christ. The Bible says in the book of Acts, and they were first called Christians at Antioch. That was the name that was given to them. Before that, they were called the way. Oh, that so you were part of that way, the way of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That, that's what they referred to, you know, them Jesus fanatics, you know, them Jesus folk. Or the, that, that's how they referred to him. But it wasn't until they got to Antioch, the Bible says that they were first called Christians at Antioch. That, 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 that name is given to us, to those that are in the possession of Jesus Christ. Those that have been baptized, their sins have been washed away. That name is then given to you and you ought to wear it proudly and if that name has been given to you as i said this morning you're not just a christian on wilson boulevard everywhere you go you are a christian and you ought to live your life in such a way that you recognize that so i'm going to do everything that i can to bring glory and honor to god amen amen we don't want to just be people they can just tell people about Christ. What, what about him? You know, you know, and the, you know the, even the Bible says that our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. As far as the heavens are from the earth so far, his ways above our ways. And the Corinthian writer Paul says, he said, what, who knows the mind of a man except the spirit of a man? So, so, so that means that I can't sit here and just look. I'm, I, I can look all I want to. I'm not going to see anything going on in your mind, you know, whatever. But who knows? Only you know what's going on within your mind. O only you know that. So who knows the mind of God? We don't. Only he knows. Only he knows. And he has a plan for all of us. He has work for all of us to do. And we can do the best that we can do. By simply being who God has called us to be. Work in that capacity. Be the best that you can be. As I say, if, if God bless you to just be a smile and greet at somebody. Man, you stand there and you greet and smile as good as you can. And look, if, and look, if all you can do is hold a dome for somebody. You hold that door and you smile as they walk in there. How you doing? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So good to see you. You be all that you can be wherever God has put you. And watch how God will bless. You'll be all in. You'll be all in with God. Lord, whatever you've given my hands to do. Don't let me be worried about the work that somebody else is doing. But whatever you put my hands to. Lord, Lord let me do the work that you've called for me to do. Don't, and don't let me. Because the Bible says that no man that has put his hands to the plowing. Look back. It's fit for the kingdom. So let us focus on the work that we've been given. And, and, and don't just do a half job with God. You, you would be upset if you were getting a house built. And they built you a house and forgot to put pipes in it. Y'all have laid the foundation. Brick and mortar is up. The roof is up. Everything is gone. But you ain't laid no pipes. Now you got to tear everything up so we can lay these pipes. When it could have been done right the first time. It could have been done right the first time. We got to be people, as we talked about this morning, everything that we do, it ought to be done with integrity. Doing it right the first time. So we ain't got to worry about the aftermath. Amen. Let us be of Christ. Let us live for him. How do we do that? By simply doing what God has commanded.
The Bible says that we ought to work righteousness. How does one work righteousness? By simply doing what God has commanded. He, he's commanded of us some things. So let us live our lives in such a way that we can be called children of God because our lives are in accordance with his will. If you're here this afternoon, and, and, and by my eyesight, everybody is a child of God. But if, if you are not a, a child of God here on this afternoon, um, the Bible said you come by hearing his word, um, believing that same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your savior, being baptized for the remission of your sins, have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life, neither the life that is to come. And maybe you're here on this afternoon, um, and maybe you are in sin, you just desire the prayers of the church here on this afternoon. You can do that at this time. It's together we stand and sing the song of invitation. <laughs>